Dr. Bellart, I followed your instructions to calibrate the Tempest prognosticator. Your concern was correct. The balls mm -hmm. must be placed from heaviest to lightest to produce accurate results. The actual weight depends on the leech used, so I have to recalibrate every time we want to take a reading. Also note that the recalibration is required if the battery in the base dies. However, the device works as intended. Once the model is aligned precisely with the moon, it may then be used to start the lunar dream apparatus safely. Josie. But that research is crucial to this story. I wonder if I can get this thing working. Who's Woodcutter? Open the safe upstairs, find the safe combination, calibrate the device. It's a scale. Okay, and so we begin the second day of Dead Secret. So we need to recalibrate that thing and to find more clues. We have something here. November 15th, 1960. Dear Harris, I read in the paper today that you received a special award from the college for groundbreaking research. I am writing to wish you my sincere congratulations. I've said some things that I regret, but Today, I wish only to extend good wishes to you and your future endeavors. Do you know the scene in North by Northwest when Cary Grant disrupts an art auction? He makes nonsensical bits, nonsensical bits until the police are called to haul him away. I saw it last summer at the cinema. We used to drive, we, we used to drive to in Logan. It was lonely to go alone, but that scene made me smile. My life feels like that sometimes. I poke my head up and say something crazy every now and then, just on the, just on the off chance that somebody will take me away from all this. I'm no carry rent. I'm afraid. I would like to hear from you. Please write me back. Sincerely. Cynthia. She misses Pollard. It's a strange device with belts on the top. There are slots for small bottles. Daily Log, June 11th, 1965. Using the moon as a trigger for the lunar dream apparatus has its problems. The moon must be full, or nearly so. The night must be clear, and the process must be started at a very specific time to ensure that the moon is visible from inside the chamber. Yos has been following weather reports and using lunar charts to try to predict days for ideal test conditions but it's an error-prone process. The data we get back from the weather service just isn't precise enough. Today, I hit upon the solution. We'll build our own weather device. In fact, we can base it upon an exceedingly accurate design from a century ago, the Tempest Prognosticator. I will have to make some modification for our purposes, of course, but I'm sure that with some tuning, we can build a device that responds exactly to our weather needs. Then, we'll need to get some leeches. Build a strange device to track the faces of the moon. The door is stuck. There are electronics inside. And it looks like a battery.
let's look for more clues on this room. What's that? What's that sound? Was the piano? Oh, I have a note here. The Crystal Cave by Bobby Sawyer, Chapter Eight. The passage continued downward, a step slope like we were going down on down a hill. The smooth crystal didn't give our feet porches. Hmm? and we were trying our best not to sleep. It was a dark night, but the light from our helmets reflected strangely from the walls, making them dense blue. Once or twice I thought I saw a flicker in the glass, but it was just a streak of the light. It was cold down there. No of, uh, none of us was wearing a jacket. It dawned on us that we had come totally unprepared. A few hours before we had been whooping and shooting, shouting, excited by the crazy angles that cut the crystal entrance out of the cave wall, sure that we'd found something that was going to make us rich. Now we walked in silence. Henderson's face wore a hard, determined look. Johnson's was all suspicion. Jimmy just looked scared, his skin pale and his eyes wide. Uh, wide. I opened my mouth to say something to him then shouted. Either we'd find a way out or we'd die down here. All there was to it. It was then that Johnson screamed. The piano chair was being knocked over. Has been knocked over. Do I need to read all this? Sheet music is scattered all over the floor. Was Ballard a musician? I didn't know that. National Recognition for Local College, Washington, D.C. July 2nd, 1965. The National Academy of Science announced its annual peaks for leaders in science academia on Wednesday. Among the recipients of the prestigious award was around Oak Lee College in Logan. The college won recognition of a controversial research paper published by the school's small neuroscience department last year. We were very proud to have our work recognized this way, said Dr. Graham Wellington, chair of Oakley's Brain Studies program. We are a very small program focused on areas of research, research that the big schools ignore. We applaud the Academy of Science for giving us the chance to prove ourselves. The award-winning paper, author of Wellington and Dr. Harris Bullard, was written in 1962, but only published last year, titled Accessing Subconscious Wave Through Twisted Pair Electro what? Electroencephalography. The highly technical paper cost some controversy in the neuroscience community and was ridiculized ridiculized by many experts in the field. The paper was the source of some local tumult as well. This paper was written entirely by Dr. Ballard. Ballard said one Oakley student who did not wish to give his name. Wellington just put his name on it and took all the credit. Ballard, Ballard who retired from the school last year could not be reached for comment. Graham Wellington claimed credit for a research paper that Bullard wrote. Pakistan's troops in Kashmir? What? It's Kashmir? Are you in Peru? Make blood run cold. There's a copy of the paper here in the cover. A story is about an award that a local school won. No, it's not. The cover story is the Pakistani troops in Kashmir. Anyway. The 
Daily Log Bollard, May 24th, 1962 Cynthia called me today She sounded drunk Sometimes I think she, uh, she calls just to get a rise out of me I maintained my calm this time Declined her invitation to meet And told her in no uncertain terms That if she was looking for money She had best look elsewhere And now I am going to go get drunk myself Graham came by my office this morning. He had a strange looking envelope. It was addressed to me, but had been pushed under the door. It bore no return address. Just a single word, woodcutter. I had to run to class and haven't got the chance to open it yet. But something about it makes me uncomfortable. I hope it's not another love letter from a student. Graham is a weasel. He's never stepped foot in the lab or run an experiment, but he makes it sound like his brains uh, he's the brain he's the brains behind the whole program. Without me, he'd be washed up theorist. He'd be a washed up theorist with nothing to his name. Berlard wants nothing to do with Cynthia and thinks little of Wellington. But is Wellington woodcutter? <gasps> Marguerite Higgins is my hero. She won a Pulitzer for her reporting in Korea. I went to college because of her. She goes to war zones, marches with the troops. Nothing scares her, and she gets the story. Marguerite Higgins doesn't run from a juicy story just because her life is in danger. Neither will I. The heart is covered in the Nash. Is there something written here? Fireplace has been used recently in the summer. A poker. A broom. Portrait of Blart feels like feels like he's looking at me. Okay, let's clean this up. It's a series of faint symbols. It's a star, a circle, and a square. Wait. Put on the mask. Oh! Damn, Bullard. Yeah, a star, a circle, and a square. Oh! It looks like we have something there. Okay. Star, circle, square. There are some loose floorboards here. Maybe if we use this. If I can get this poker wedge under a board, maybe I can pry it up. There's a hidden space under the floorboards. Floorboards. Star Circle Square It's an old metal key oh. Bell 
I owe you many thanks for forwarding my request to the New York Times. I think we have the opportunity to tell one of the great science stories of the 20th century and make a considerable sum in the process. The Times is a great first step, but when we are finished I want to have headlines written about me and the front page of every paper in the country. The key to our success is Harris Ballard's brain research. He has discovered something fundamental about the operation of some subconscious brain waves. And I believe that he will soon harness this knowledge to be an advice whose object is to make men superhuman. Our first task is to procure this device before Ballard can publicize it. And my plans to accomplish that are already in motion. Once the device in, is in my hands, I am confident that I can reproduce the imp and improve upon this work, his work. That, Mr. Mitchell, is where you come in. An invention of this magnitude must not be consigned, consigned to the boneyard of the academic journal. It deserves praise and recognition from the common man. We will make it in the uh, we will make it the story of the year, and then we will sell the technology to our to those rich enough to meet our price. For now, we wait for Bellard to finish the device. Then we will make our move. I look forward to your continued cooperation in this mutual beneficial partnership. Best regards, Graham Wellington. Conspiring to steal, conspiring to steal Bullard's research. Oh. Yeah, we have the safe combination. Where was the safe again? A lockbox was hidden in this hole. Why was this box in the hole? Doesn't make much much of the much of the sense. Okay, let's go. All the way up there we have something to search. And Apart from that, nothing. Somebody was in a rush to pack this stuff. These boxes are ready to go. The cupboard's been most emptied. Pots and pans, they haven't been packed very well. The stove top is clean, it probably works. United States Patent Office, patented January 3rd, 1963. 31X and so on. I were with. Um, what? 
I wear with electromagnetic refracting lenses. Here is Bollard, Oakley College, Logan KS, file November 7th, 1959, serial number, blah blah blah. blah. Abstract of the disclosure. A pair of googles is provided which includes a metal strip, a battery and lenses, and lenses, an assembly which when placed over the eyes so that it rests against the head permits the metal strip to touch the skin just above the left ear and crossing the forehead, forehead to touch the skin above the right ear as well as well. <laughs> the function of the metal strip is to detect upon contact electromagnetic electromagn electromagnetic impulses from the brain and to transmit them to the lenses. The lenses are created from a glass material. Reference co-pending application serial number 655234 failed April 12, 1957. This is made to alter its refraction of light based on, uh, based on electromagnetic impulses received from the metal strip and amplified by the battery. This invention relates to the visualization of the electromagnetic activity on the brain and more particularly the creation of visual patterns based on the neural activity of the subconscious. Subconscious. Coffee can that's frozen shut. I can hear something rattling around inside. <coughs> we really, really, really need to take a look at everything here. If we miss something, we we lose the story, and we don't want that. There's a well outside. Oh well. Bobby, here's the list of supplies this week. I know you're angry that I haven't paid in a month, but please wait a little bit longer. I have some money coming and I'll be able to pay you soon. Billion cigarettes, tonic water, white bread, butter, eggs, copper wire, three feet, solder, spool, vinyl tape, gasoline, gasoline, batane, leeches, as many as you can get alive. What? So the supplies consider leeches. Do we get it on the supermarket? Ballard owed him money. Harris Ballard, I am woodcutter. You will complete your research and then hand it out to me, uh, hand, it out, hand it to me, or we can discuss the South Pacific in 1944. Yeah, whatever, man, we can discuss it. It's full of dishes. Jeez, looks like they just threw them in there. Pantry. We had something here. Ah, uh, here. A bottle. Great. The letter D is printed on the label. So that's the bottle. The pantry stock bullard could survive for a long time on this stuff. 
And there is a lot of things here. The handle turns, but the door won't open. Something's blocking it on the other side. No, oh, a shit. January 2nd, 1961. Dear Harris, Happy New Year! I suppose I am wasting my time by writing you again, but the New Year always makes me think about the past. I was very upset when you did not respond to my last letter. I was told that you refused my calls at the college. I understand that you are still angry, and for that I cannot fault you. But unlike you, I have gotten past our little meltdown. I have grown to see it as the inevitable terminus of our relationship. Something that had to happen sooner or later. Like spilled milk, as they say, is not worth crying over. But I do have a request. I will make it plain. Harris, I need money. Some of my investments went bad last year and with Kennedy in the White House soon the others will certainly fail. You may hate me now, but I cannot believe you will consign me to a life of poverty. Yep. Somewhere deep down inside you, under the mask, you were in your daily life, I know you must still feel something for me. Hmm? Please say you'll help me. Just this once. Put down the mask and trust your feelings. Humbly and sincerely, Cynthia. Over Ballard, but wants money. Over Ballard, but wants money for her gambling debts. I use the old key to unlock the door. Oh, the leeches! The tube is full of leeches! This is disgusting. I guess the leeches are recent addition. Oh. The Crystal Cave by Bobby Sawyer. Chapter 14. We rounded the corner and Johnson stopped dead like he'd been given an electric shock. I ran into him, cursing before I heard it, for so, uh, from somewhere far ahead, deep in the darkness, somebody was singing, a woman's voice. It echoed off the crystal walls and then seemed everyone, to, everyone everywhere at once. The song was so faint. I listened hard but couldn't make out the words. The melody was odd, ghost-like, but it was definitely a person singing. Johnson turned and looked at me, looked at me, but didn't say anything. We both understood. Somebody was down there. Somebody who must know the way out. We were saved. We broke into a run. Johnson cradling his arm as we tried to cross the forest of crystal, scrambling over translucent beams of amethyst, big as fallen redwoods. I slipped, hit a smooth surface hard, got up again. We followed the woman's voice deeper and deeper into the cave. Jimmy got to the plateau first. Plateau first. I could tell before I made the rise that something was wrong. In the middle of the mesa was a sort of hatch, like something off the deck of a submarine. It, it was round and made of steel, and sticking out of it was a metal locking wheel. The woman's song drifted up from it like smoke. I looked back at Johnson as I grasped the handle. He was out of breath, still clutching his wrist where his hand had been, trying to keep the cloth tourniquet tied around the stump. He nodded and I gave it a turn. Okay. IRP defeats India and Lahore in cold storage. Cold winds coming. Are you in peril? Cold winter increases risk of exposure. December 27, 1964. Kansas City. 
with temperatures with temperatures below 20 for most of the state experts experts warn that deaths from hypothermia are on the rise several deaths have already been attributed to the cold this year including two hikers from south of uh, Ottawa and a man in Waikata December is one of the deadliest, deadliest months said Charles Manning chief medical examiner at, uh, at uh, Ottawa PD people don't realize how cold it's gotten and got out unprepared profound hypothermia occurs when a person's core body temperature drops below 90 degrees yeah Fahrenheit however scientists do not yet understand why the deep cold kills some people and spares others according to Manning men are the greater risk than women are at greater risk than women and the cold is particularly dangerous for thin people identifying dead by hypothermia can be a challenge said Manning if the victim in e if the victim is found in the snow with his clothes half off then we know but sometimes bodies are unrecovered uh, until much later often without a mark on them Scientists do not understand why some victims of hypothermia remove their clothing, a phenomenon called paradoxical undressing, while others do not. Last March, the body of a 30-year-old woman who had been missing for several days was found near Topeka. After failing to identify the cause of, the cause of death, the coroner chalked, chalked it up to exposures to exposure to exposure to the elements the easiest way to go to go yes to stay safe is not to go out alone in the cold especially at night said Manning if you must go out make sure that other people know where you are headed and dress warmly if you're in car accident stay in the car don't try to have to have it to the next town on your own Perfect. Oh man, with this reading simulator. A bottle. The letter, the letter A is printed on the label. Give me the bottle. A D. This toilet, this toilet, is a lot newer than the house itself. The toilet is spotless, spotless. At some point, the original toilet must have been replaced. Extremely clean, but otherwise, an exceptional toilet. It's gotta mean something. We had a sheet of paper here. Yay, more reading. January 8th, 1956. Uh, As I sat idly by the window today, watching the snow slowly cover the, uh, cover the fields, I remember the story of the snow woman. I first encountered it in a thin volume of Japanese folk tales that somebody loaned me at the base of Yokohama. And a decade later, it is the only story from that collection that I can recall. The Snow Woman is a fascinating cha uh, character. She is a monster, a mother, a force of nature. Yet, she has human qualities af as well. Having fallen in love with a young man, she spared his, his life in order that she may appear to him later in another form and marry him. By telling her of his father's death, the man breaks a contract. But it's not just a contract between the man and the snow woman. It's a contract with the universe itself. It is, uh, it is what binds her to the moral plane, allowing her to live as a human with the man she loves. By breaking his promise, he has destroyed her life. She is no longer able to remain with him or with her family. Even if she 
should want to, it is no wonder she is angry. Oh! Did you see the horns? We had horns just before. This is real. I could die here. There's nothing special about the faucet. Just an ordinary soap. It's a flashlight. It doesn't have any batteries. Flashlight. No batteries. Hmm. The the um, the demon is Bullard, right? The Week in Review, November 9th, 1964. Johnson City. Texas President Johnson bound up on reports and correspondence at the LBJ Ranch today pending arrival of cabinet officials for a wide ranging review of defense and foreign problems. Defense Secretary Robert S. McNamara and Deputy Defense Secretary Sirius R. Vance were due to arrive by yet, yet star at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. CST. Yeah, Central Time. And we remain overnight at the ranch. Sagan, South Vietnam, the, the, Viet Cong mount, uh, the Viet Cong Mount the Salt, mounted and assault on the Vien Hoa Airport in Saigon on November 1st. Washington has yet to comment on the impact of the attack on U.S. operations in Vietnam. Neshawa County, MS-18, MSM, <coughs> Minnesota. <coughs> oh, sorry. 18 men arrested by the FBI in connection with the murder of three civil rights. <coughs> can read anymore now yeah. and something about the cuckoo's clan oh, and something about the entertainment and the baby love dad took me to Wichita once before he died we drove for four hours to get there ate hamburgers and watched a movie then we went home he never explained just told me to get in the car. I guess he knew he was going to die. Okay, something's gotta happen with this game. Otherwise, it's getting a little... Well, okay. There's nothing left to see here, right? Let's try going out. Well, lock the door. That's good. Okay, now let's go for the safe. The safe was up, right? I mean, upstairs. Was it left or right? This is Bullard's room. So here is the safe. So left twenty, right fifty, left ten. 
left 20, right 50, left 10. Oh, thank you. Left 20, right 50. Left ten. Open the safe, yeah. Oh god, we have a lot of reading here. Martin Bros construction. The zip of the service is rendered date June sixteenth, nineteen sixty four. Total parts a lot of money, total labor, not that much money. Total build, a lot of money. Paid in the fall. Got. Oh, install the steel siding and insulation per, speci uh, per specification. Run electrical for fans and evaporator on the floor to connect the main line in basement. Compressor, evaporator, freon tank and ventilation installed and tested. Replacement and standard door handle with locking variety per customer request. Mm. Why lock a receipt like this away? It's a good question, girl. Do you want to have the case? <coughs> Yo! This is the only remaining copy of our research materials. I destroyed the rest. Take this and get out of here. Mm. After I'm going. Uh, after I'm gone, they'll turn this house upside down looking for answers. Josie, I know about the secret room behind your wardrobe. If you've stashed anything there, you must get rid of it. <coughs> I've already cleaned out the freezer. I'm counting on you. Take the files, destroy the machine, and get out of here. Harris. A secret room? And what did Bullard have hidden it to the freezer? in the freezer. Search in the basement freezer and explore Yosi's secret room. Another document. The lunar dream apparatus altering the brain the brain the brain to achieve permanent ideal focus by Bullard and Herrera. Abstract. William Benjamin Carpenter's work describing the Carpenter effect over a century ago goes continues to baffle psychologi psychologists today. We have struggled to understand the linkage between the conscious and the subconscious, particularly the ways in which the subconscious mind seems to wield special knowledge of which the conscious mind is unaware. Our research attempts to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all of the information stored in the subconscious. Subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. We have done this in a rudimentary way with a set of lenses that reflect light by tracking alterations in brain waves, but a more robust connection requires permanent alteration of the brain. The lunar dream apparatus combines engineering, psychology, neuroscience and a bit of psychics physics to create just such a connection. Yeah. In order to give the subject some control over their own subconscious, subconscious we have chosen the moon as a mental mnemonic. After undergoing treatment in the lunar rain apparatus, the subjects, subjects conscious and subconscious are merged wherever, whenever a full moon is visible. <coughs> oh. This paper describes the construction of the apparatus, its function, the details of our research, and data recorded from our first test, su test subject. Co-author, Josephine Herrera. This must be what Woodcutter was after, the lunar dream apparatus. Oh. You think? You're Brilliant girl, you are brilliant. 
Bottle number C. Printer on the level. So we have AC. What? AAC. ADC. <coughs> So let's go to Josie's room. What the hell is doing that thing here? Wait, I've seen this before. Yeah, during our hallucination, this fireplace is full of logs. Oh. If Woodcutter killed Bullard, he was pretty sneaky about it. No marks on the body, no sign of a struggle. Coroner ruled it was pancreatic failure. How do you kill a man without leaving a mark on him? And why return to the scene of the crime? Do we have something else? Yeah, let's go to the to Yosemite's bedroom. Look for the secret room. Oh! Yeah, it's gotta be here. Like Narnia. Not much of interest. Yes! Yosi, what were you up to? Oh. Let's use a mask, maybe we can see something else. We are walking. I can assure you, we don't see anything, but we are walking. Maybe we need to find some batteries for the for the flashlight first. Uh, but anyway, it's not that dark anymore here. battery. I need two. Oh man. Oh, here we go. Dear diary, I was thinking about that today. I finally, finally got some confirmation from the insurance company which fills in some blanks. Here's what I know so far. Dad went to war in 1940 to the Philippines. He had some minor injury and was discharged in 1944. He was the only member of his unit to survive, the rest having died in a submarine. In 1946, his parents' home in Illinois burned down and he turned up to collect the insurance payout. At least somebody did. He didn't have any other family, so it must have been him. But after that, I can't find any trace of him. Then, 
1952, the name Harris Bullard turns up in the footnotes of a research paper, paper from Oakley College. Is this that? If so, what was he doing in the years after the war? Maybe he went abroad. There are some inconsistencies. That studies physics, not neuroscience, and Dr. Harris Bullard of Oakley College seems to have a chemistry background. There couldn't have been two Harris Bullard at the University of Chicago, was it? In the 1930s. Good there. The scariest thing for me is that Dr. <coughs> Bullard looks nothing like the one photo I have of my father. In the photo his face looks different and he is not so tall and skinny. Of course he would have been younger as the photo was taken before I was born, but maybe it's not that in the photo after all. I changed my major to neuroscience and moved out here with one purpose, to figure out if Dr. Harris Bullard of Gulf, Kansas is the man who promised to marry Mama in 1939. It's been two years and I'm still not sure. I do not have the guts to ask him. What if I'm wrong? What will that make me? Jose Herrera Harris Bullard is her father, but he looks different. Dear Diary, got a letter from the Herreras today. They are good parents, even if they aren't, even if they aren't my real parents. They sent a letter to me at Dr. Bullard's house, which means they no, I'm living here. I wonder if they are worried. They, The whole town seems to have decided that the only reason I stay here is that I'm sleeping with him. Hmm? I don't care what the small-minded bumpkin, bump, bumpkins around here think. But I hope the Herreras aren't worried. Maybe soon I can tell them what I'm really up to. Also, Bobby Sawyer gave me another draft of his novel. He's really weird, but I think it's pretty good. No, it's really weird. He is really weird anyway. I've been typing up this manuscript on Dr. Bollard's typewriter. I'm fixing mistakes and making little edits as I go. When he's done, when he's done, he's going to submit the type the typed version to Amazing Stories or Words of Tomorrow. I hope that publish, they publish it. I don't know if magazines would even look at work by a black author. I told him to use a pen name. Tomorrow we run the first live test of the Lunar Dream Apparatus. Dr. Ballard doesn't think it's going to work the first time. I hope it does. It does. I volunteer to be the first test subject. Maybe after the treatment I'll be able to understand what happened to that. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. That's a monkey for sure. Oh! The monkey's gone! Okay, let's go. We have nothing left to do here. do we want to do now?
There's no way I'm jumping out of the window again. Okay, we have one frozen coffee can. Three empty bottles. One more is missing. One flashlight with no batteries. Battery. Oh, the smoke knob. There was a door we weren't able to open because it hasn't. It hadn't. A knob. So we got it now, so let's try that. But. I believe we will have to try it tomorrow. So, that was it for today, and as always, thanks for watching, and yes, yes, thanks for watching, yes. I will see you tomorrow with more of Dead Secret. Thanks and take care. Bye.